Well, uh, as you can see today, we, we signed uh, Ted Karras and Alex Kappa and uh, released Trey Hopkins as well. So really excited to have these two guys in the building. They're, they're made of all the right stuff. They've got tremendous experience in this league, and, and they'll fit right into what we're trying to build here going forward. So just uh, researching them over the last couple of weeks and getting to spend some time with them over the last 24 hours has been uh, – has just reconfirmed all the things that we thought about those two guys and, and really excited that we got them in the building and they can help us moving forward. What did you think about those two guys in the process? Say that one more time. What did you think about, I mean, you said reconfirmed. I mean, what did you yeah, they just, they, they play ball the right style away. Uh, they love talking ball. They love thinking about ball. They love all the things that come with it, spending time with their teammates, um, all the chemistry stuff that we know is so important. And so I, I just think it, it fits right into what we're continuing to build in that offensive line room. Uh, building on our offense and, and just our overall team chemistry as well. With the news of Trey Hopkins, do you anticipate Cars playing center? Or are you going to leave that up to training camp to see? Where He'll be our center. With Trey, are you guys open to trying to find a way to bring him back in a different way, or is that not really on the table? I, I think right now we're where we're at, just where we are today. And uh, and again, you never say never on a lot of things, but but right now that's where we're at. What, what did you guys see from Ted? Yeah, he, I, we've just seen enough great stuff um, about how he's just operated as an offensive lineman. And and the more you talk to people who have been around him, uh, it just reconfirms, again, all the things that we've seen on tape, all the flexibility we've seen from him. Um, you know, and, and just one more thing that I've said to these guys several times, but they've got three Super Bowl rings between the two of them, you know, and that's that's something we're striving for. And so I think I think that's just the icing on the cake, really, with all the things we, we would have taken them anyway. Uh, but the fact that they've been to the top of the mountain and, and been there and know how to finish the job, and that's obviously where we're trying to get to, is um, something that's exciting as well. That worked well with your free agents from last year, the last two years really, bringing them in from winning teams. Did right. that kind of confirm, hey, this is a formula we should keep using? It, it doesn't hurt, you know, and, and now, you know, we know that we're a winning team as well. And so you just continue to add the right pieces and, and these are two guys that we identified from the jump that, that we wanted to target them from the beginning. Um, they wanted to be here. And so that's, that's, that's usually a pretty good recipe. Guys that are uh, had success that they've had during the prime of their career, do you project them as potential leaders of the football team? Absolutely. You know, just getting to know their personalities a little bit better. Those are things that you don't always know um, until you get around them. And, um, you know, it's almost like I had to make them stop talking ball. You know, Frank's had them in there, I think, uh, with, with earlier meetings, you know, and, and all the stuff that we talk about in our line room. So uh, that's that's exciting to be around, you know, guys that just love talking it and breathing it. And, and uh, you know, so just having to have a couple meals with them and spending time with them in the building, we, we know that they're they're made of the right stuff. You said these are two guys you identified at the, at the jump of free agency. Can mm -hmm. you walk us through – how you got to those two from after the Super Bowl, I guess, how you guys identified the interior was going to be where you wanted to go and then zeroing in on those two guys? Yeah, I think that's the starting point is 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 wanting to help out the interior of our offensive line. And so as you go through the process of watching guys and um, zeroing in on, on who you want to get after there on the Monday of free agency, these are the two of the guys that uh, we identified as, as top targets. And, and fortunately, they both uh, reciprocated the – um, desire to be here that we had for having them join our club and and it's really worked out so again sometimes it just it makes sense and this one made sense when it comes to taking this offense to, to another level is it as simple as just getting better blocking i mean when you guys looked at kind of what y'all did last year offensively was it just as simple as maybe if we can just you know give joe a few extra weeks to hold yeah we're, we're just always looking for ways to improve our team you know and, and really felt like these two guys help us improve our team and and we've had um, tremendous guys man those posts in the past you know that i have a ton of respect for uh, but again, you're always evolving, and, and this is just one of the ways that we're going to do it. Continuity has always been a big thing, uh, Zach, with you. But in this case, you're talking about bringing two guys into a unit that's a critical part of your offense. Mm -hmm. What gives you the confidence that both Ted and uh, Alex can, uh, you know, be a part of that unit and fit right in? Just doing the research on their character, uh, the type of players they are, the type of people they are. And then just watching the tape over the last several years, you know, and, and so, again, the, the tape doesn't lie. Um, they have both played on really successful teams, and they, they were both two of the reasons why those teams were so successful because of the way that they did their job. And uh, so we know that they're going to step right in and, and continue to have that success with us. They're both played, they're both played with Tom Brady. Do you sense that uh, the emergence of Tom Brady 
influence of Joe Burrow was a factor in his decision and your conversation with him? Well, you know, I, I do think that's that's a, a good thing for all of us. You know, as Joe continues to grow, um, you've got two guys that have played with arguably the best to ever do it. And so um, I, I think any – Joe's a sponge. He, he only wants to get better. And so, you know, any insight that they can have from, from winning Super Bowls or pulling all-time greats I think doesn't hurt. Talk about researching character. What, what does that entail? And was there a conversation or two that stuck out to you that helped, you know, kind of give you a little bit more of a view here? Yeah, I, not to get into great specifics, but just talking to any players and coaches and strength coaches and anybody you know from college, pros, um, just to, to get some of the background. And, and we take it all in, and, um, you know, it always added up that these are two guys that we should add to the club. How, how big would it be to, to add a, you know, a right tackle to that mix? And kind of, you know, how, what, would that, what would that do to this line, and, and given what you have? You know, I, I think we're just, you know, as free agency continues to go, you're always exploring ways to make your team better. And, and so that's just kind of the path we're on right now. Is the recruiting aspect of free agency completely different coming off a Super Bowl appearance? Um, well, you know, th these two guys really didn't come in on a recruiting trip. You know, it's, it's the first three days. Um, it, it's not coach's involvement. And so though I think you'll have to speak to them, but I, I think they had a desire to be here. And so it worked out. And, and then once you get to Wednesday, and guys are unsigned, then at times it becomes a little bit more getting them in on visits and, and recruiting and stuff. So um, it's a little bit different. I, I think their, theirs was a little bit different because we couldn't reach out and talk to them. And they obviously wanted to be here, and they knew that we wanted them. All right, you guys ready okay. to talk to the Great. guys? Yes. Thank Hello, Science. Yeah, hello, Science. <laughs> hello. How are you doing? Great. So, did y'all know each other before y'all y'all got here? Or, I mean, was y'all familiar familiarity like with, with each other? We met yesterday. Yep. Yeah, we showed up. So, watch him on film a lot. <laughs> but we met yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> Alex, can you walk us through the, sh the the process for you? Because so we all found out 12:01 the tampering period begins. So it looked like the Bengals signed you right away, but. Were you talking to them? Like, did you just find out from your agent right at 12.01? What was the process like for you to find out the Bengals were interested in you and you were coming to Cincinnati? I let my agent handle the process, so that would probably be a better question for him. But I knew it was a good place to come to and a place where we're going to be competitive and uh, talented, so that's what I was looking for. And yeah. Did Tom ever reach out to you when all that stuff was going down on Sunday? <laughs> We'll keep my conversations with Tom private, but I, I really enjoyed my time with Tom, um, and I'm super excited to start here. What's that like to watch that? I mean, you, you're probably thinking, okay, I think we know what we're going to do. What is that like to see that bombshell happen right before free agency starts? Yeah, I mean, I didn't expect it. I thought he was retiring, but uh, I don't know. Maybe somebody had the inside scoop, but not me. How big a deal was it in the early stages of your career to be exposed to an offensive line coach as, uh, as great as the one that you were exposed to with the Patriots? How much did that help? Yeah, I, I give a lot of credit to my career to Dante Skarnecchia. Um, you know, had a, you know, first four years of my career under his tutelage and got a lot better. And uh, now excited to work with uh, Coach Pollock. Uh, Alex, what do you think? Yeah, oh, go, ahead. Go, ahead, go ahead. What do you think's been the key for you to be able to sustain the durability that you've had throughout your career? I know that's a big thing that this team is excited about. Is basically how much you've been able to play and how durable you are. I think it's just. Uh, work ethic and, and preparation, making sure your body's well prepared, and then it definitely takes some luck, too. I mean, everybody's going to get, knock on wood, injured at some point, but I mean, it takes some luck and just uh, taking care of your body, really. Ted, uh, Coach said you were playing center. Uh, you've, been, you've played all three spots. Uh, how comfortable you are at center, and what do you think is the biggest, uh, you know, what do you think is the biggest talent you have at, at center? Well, I think I'm a vocal guy. I understand, uh, well, will understand this offense. Um, you know, I love learning a new language. It's going to be a new challenge, a fun challenge coming up here, um, you know, for my third offense that I've learned in the, in the National Football League. But, um, you know, center is a very unique position. Obviously, you have to handle the ball and block your guy. And uh, very excited for the challenge that it poses uh, this upcoming season. Alex, have you always had a high pain tolerance? You want to play with a broken arm and try to play with a broken leg? What's up? I don't know. I don't really overthink it. I just uh, – someone described it to me as, like, 
And that's how I feel also that when you're out there playing online, there's no one coming to get you. And so you're just, you got to figure out a way to get it done and kind of deal with the consequences after, I guess, sometimes. Can you talk us through the, I want to play with a broken leg story. I mean, how that came about. And what, what, well, I that. wasn't aware at the time that it was broken, <laughs> but I thought I just got rolled up on my ankle and I went in at halftime to get it taped. Everyone's like, are you good? I'm like, yeah, I'm good. I mean, I don't know. My ankle's taped now, so I think I'm good. And I went out there, and I was not good. So I gave it the best shot, but I didn't get it done. And Ted, obviously, when you, when you look at joining a franchise where there's a lot of conversation about being able to, to protect better than he did last year, what's that like knowing that that's what the expectation is going to be, that the, the blocking must be better than it was the last couple of years? Well, this is a performance-based league. And uh, obviously, this is a great opportunity uh, that I jumped on right away um, to help a team that obviously has had some success. Um, but like you said, expectations need to be higher at this position. So. Um, you know, going to work our hardest to, you know, get the job done and hopefully might make life easy for our QB. Same question to you, Alex. Yeah, I mean, the expectations are always high. So it's not really what is about what has happened or what's going to happen. The expectations are always going to be high. So that's how you want it. Either or both. How big was the Joe Burrow factor in your decision? I think you just want to go to a team that's going to be competitive and going to be good. And I think we see that here. It's a very talented team. So we're excited to get to work. Um, and obviously, Joe's a big part of that. Yeah, and obviously, you know, the quarterback is the most important position in sports, and there's a, you know, a really good one here, and uh, really excited to work with them and be teammates and friends, and ultimately, you know, perform well to have victories on Sunday is our goal. When did you guys first meet Joe, talk to Joe, and, and what's your first impression? Joe texted me a couple of days ago um, after everything came out, and uh, he seems great. I was very excited. We had dinner last night, had the burrow steak, pretty good. And, uh, yeah, it seems great. We're excited to get to work. Yeah, same exact scenario. Joe reached out and, uh, you know, met him last night. Very excited to get to work. I also had the steak burrow. <laughs> so, <laughs> it was good. Who would be a, a mentor besides your line coaches that are obviously instrumental in your development and you guys are still in the prime of your career? Is, it, is there any player or players that you would say were mentors in your Teammates. You want to start? I'll start. Um, I would say Matthew Slater yeah. of New England just as a try to emulate him, not only as how he handled himself as a professional and a player, obviously performed at the highest level as a special teams player has ever performed, um, but as a man and a father, um, the, the example that he provided. And I could list a, n a number of teammates that I've had, but if I had to single out one, it would be Matthew Slater. Yeah, there's been a bunch, but I'll give a shout out to Demar Dotson if you remember a long time Buccaneer. He played right tackle when I first started at guard over there, um, so that was great when I was first starting to play with somebody who had a bunch of experience. So, you guys looking forward to being mentors to your teammates? Absolutely. Yeah, I'm just excited to get to know everybody and uh, start building some relationships for sure. Go, you go. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, you, sir, you. Yeah. <laughs> I've not. I warned him too. I was like, "Dude, I'm not like trying to be weird or anything. <laughs> <laughs> it just looks good." So, yeah. What, what was that like? When you're, I mean, when you're going into you know your dinner, your first you know significant like meeting with the quarterback, question both you guys. What's that like, and what are you kind of wanting to know and looking to know in that first interaction where you're going to get a lot of time with him? Well, I think that you want to make a good first impression. Um, you know, it was. I thought we had a great time at dinner. Uh, talked a little ball. Talked just about life and. Uh, you know, looking forward to continuing that relationship. My favorite part of being on the team is being on the team, being to you know the guys and the relationships that you build. And everyone has a singular goal, which is rare in any industry. So it's very unique and, uh, you know, my favorite part of playing football. I think uh, just getting to know him, really, and asking him about what the culture's like around here, how the building operates, all that kind of stuff. Um, but you got to get to know people at first, so that's what it's all about. Yeah, I think uh, – so there's – the only other guy in recent history who's played in the NFL um, from Humboldt was Taylor Boggs, and he was an offensive lineman. And he told me, like, my sophomore year at Humboldt, he was like – something along the lines of, 
if you don't think you're going to play in the NFL, just jump off of this balcony, dude. And so that kind of told me to get my mind right. Um, so that gave me a lot of confidence that he was a good mentor for me also. Hey, obviously, you've been around winners in that New England locker room, and there's a lot of talk around here about how much everybody loves being around one another here in this locker room. And I'm curious, why is that such a big deal, and what do you think you're going to bring here? Well, I think the culture of any organization, um, you know, contributes to its success or its failure. Um, and, you know, I've been – I moved around a lot as a kid. I was a lot of – I was a new kid a lot. And uh, yesterday, as as first day of school go, um, I, it was m my most comfortable ever. So I'm very excited to be here. I can't wait for spring to start so that we can, you know, start getting to know everyone. Um, and, you know, I think I'm just going to bring, you know uh, – hard work and a lot of determination. I really care and, uh, you know, care about my teammates, hopefully get together and, and you know, have a lot of fun. And be, being victorious is fun in this league, so that's the ultimate goal. Ken, you always moved around, or did you move around when Dante started to, you know, when you got to Dante? Had you, had you always been a one spot, or had you always kind of moved around even before you got to the win one? No, I was right guard in college um, for most of my college career. And when I got to New England, my role was to – um, be able to play at any of the three interior positions. What, what was the hardest thing about center, about uh, playing center? Um, the responsibility of the ball and the calls and how everyone's, uh, you know, I mean, if you, if, you, if you don't get it right, then we're all wrong. So center has to be right. Um, so obviously you're part of a, a team that just won a Super Bowl recently. I mean, what's it like kind of carrying that experience in and kind of what are you hoping to kind of rub off on a team that was just in, in that situation? Yeah, I mean, I think um, – before you can do any of that, I think you really got to get to know the guy. So I feel a little weird like talking about it before I know everybody, but a big part of it is just being on the same page and communicating. So building relationships is huge for that so that you can always be on the same page, always working together. I think that's one of the biggest things you can do. Uh, did your impression of the Bengals as an organization change last year as they made their run in the Super Bowl? Did you, did you view them differently? Yeah, I think winning changes a lot. It changes how everybody feels. It changes how people view you and – like Ted said, that's why we're all here. So it, that changes everything. Having played with having played with Brady, I mean, do you, I mean, did even have you, even the, the limited conversations you had with Burrow? I mean, do you see any similarities between both of those guys in comparison? Sometimes people view as one major. I mean, we got to spend more time together, but obviously they're both great players, and um, everybody speaks very highly of Joe. So I'm excited to spend more time with him and uh, work together. You guys experienced Super Bowl victory, and then, and then the season after the challenges of quote running it back like everybody talks about. Big is that um, mindset that you have and the pitfalls that you may face and what you have to do to try to run it back as such? Well, I think everybody talks, like even how we are in here right now, like it's just going to happen again. And uh, that's not the case. It takes a lot of work. So um, that's the biggest thing is just you know how much work goes into it. When was the last time you guys were sitting at a podium doing an interview? Usually the offensive linemen don't uh, get to the podium. I had one or two this past year, <laughs> um, but it's great to see everyone, you know, and, and be able to talk to you guys face to face. I hope that we can learn your names. Um, obviously, you know, it's been a weird couple years, so I'm glad we're getting back to normal and can kind of have a, you know, it's been hard to build a relationship with the media the past few years, so I'm looking forward to this. How did you guys get your steaks cooked? Medium rare. Medium rare. Is that appropriate? <laughs> I'm new to the Midwest, so I don't know. If that's like... <laughs> yeah. Congratulations, guys. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, guys. Looking forward to working with you.
it anywhere in uh, particular? Dead center, if you don't mind. Dead center? Yep. Same place where you're going to put Ted. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there, Butch. <laughs> so did you get the glass eaters you were hoping to get? Yeah, those two guys are glass eaters. You guys didn't see them eating glass earlier? <laughs> they like to yeah, eat you wherever we're told. Do, yeah, any way they want it, they can have it. It's, uh, they're, they're the type of guys we were looking for. We're excited to have them, no doubt. What stood out most about both guys when you were watching them? I'm sure you watched them at the combine when we talked to you last. But right, the right. Their, their physical play. Um, and then, and then being in a, a heavy drop back system for both those guys uh, and the production that they showed on tape. And uh, those are the things that jumped out at me on tape for sure. What does leadership along the offensive line mean to you, these two guys? That yeah, it's, it's really – the old line, I like to reference them as the silent leaders on, on the team. They're the guys that always lead by example. Every now and then you have a special guy that might rise to be more of a vocal leader. You know, but at line one, the old line's got to be the silent leader. The, the way they work on a day in and day, daily basis, how they prepare themselves, how they conduct themselves, how are they on game day, whether the ebbs and flows of the game, how, how are they maintaining themselves, and how are they going about their business. So it's all about what you what you can see as opposed to what you can hear that comes from that group. That's to me is is leadership from the old line. Not not all of that is going to show up on tape, I assume. I mean. There's other stuff that you have to do to vet them. How did you go about vetting those? Just besides watching the tape, talking to other coaches or other players who know them as well, and then just how they carry and conduct themselves and just getting a little information that way. I mean, the the football circles are, are uh, pretty tight. There's that, was that six degrees of Kevin Bacon in NFL or football? It's really one degree. I mean, I know a guy who you also know really well, and it's you're one guy removed from getting to know someone really well. So it's easy from a coaching standpoint, from a player standpoint. It's amazing how, how tight the fraternity is in football. It's, it's amazing that way. Coach, in the, in the session here, they all, all, both of them seemed alert, aware, engaged, you know, all that kind of stuff. Is that what you see from them? Is that how they play football? Absolutely. Great awareness. Um, it jumps out on tape that they love ball. I mean, uh, Karras is the son of a coach. He's got a pretty famous uh, great uncle, yeah. you know. So, uh, yeah, they're, I mean, you can just see it in their play. I mean, they're already hitting me up for for playbook and scheme. I was talking a little protection this morning with, with Kappa last night or on the phone, actually, when I know we got Karis. He's already hitting me up and, and about terminology and, and what's your tenants in the room? What do you, how do you like? What's your philosophy? And, I mean, they're all in. It's, it's exciting to see players that, that love ball like that. Coach, when you get a guy who played for this guy, Nick, here, I would imagine that's you got to have to like him. And he's got a great reputation. I would imagine that. Adam. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I think I mentioned this. Uh, I think with, with talking with Lap the other day that I'm excited just to sit down and and, and pull from him. What are some things, unique things that uh, Coach Karnacki had taught him? You know, maybe there's something out there that uh, that I can definitely learn. Uh, through Skarnicki, through him. Um, you can always learn as a coach things from players, and that's some of the stuff that uh, I'm always looking to glean from other guys that have been in other systems. Maybe it's a different way to, to communicate or paint something or reach a player. Maybe it's, maybe it's a, a different way of doing a drill. You know, maybe it's a new term that just resonates with players more uh, at, at this, this day and age, but uh, all for sure. So when, you, when you saw Karras on tape playing center, what struck you? His footwork, really, to be honest with you, jumped out at me at first. I was impressed with it, how efficient and clean his footwork is. And then uh, and he, he's good at IDing and communicating and, uh, and then doing my background checks in there. He, he's really good at that stuff and loves that stuff. He's excited about uh, being able to do that um, a lot. And, uh, and then how, how, uh, how productive he was, and not just, not just at one position, but he's, he's a true – position flex guy where he's been productive at all three spots on the inside. Not not a center that can get you out of game at guard or a guard that can be an emergency center, but a starter at all three spots on the inside and been productive in the NFL. It's, that's pretty impressive. If, if, they, if these guys at Interior can be as good as you're hoping to be when they sign, how big of a boost can this be for this offense and what do you think that will unlock that maybe y'all didn't have before? 
Sure, it's it's going to be it's always going to be huge. I mean, just just being firm in the middle of the pocket so the quarterback can step up and 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 make throws, and uh, that's that's line one. So is it? You always want to be firm in the pocket from the inside out, and it starts with the with the interior three. So that's going to be. I mean, it's just it's tremendous. Probably a great question to ask uh, Joe Burrow himself. You know, I'm sure he's got an opinion on that as well. Well, how much did you guys talk to him? As you guys were going through the free agent process and seeing what kind of guys he wanted on the line, and what were the conversations like as you all went through this? That's probably a good, a better question for for Zach or the or the uh, coach Callahan or Coach Pitcher. That that spend a little bit more time talking with him. My interaction with him has really been on maybe either selling uh, the the Bengals and the and our and what we got going on here, or celebrating. Uh, in that case, like last night with the guys who were already here and uh, them getting him getting to meet them for the first time. So. Speaking of, speaking of celebrating, what was your first reaction on Monday when you found out that you were going to be able to get both of these guys? Well, I was on the road working out uh, some draft guy stuff, but uh, I was extremely excited. I mean, it was they were really, really high on our, on our go after list, and uh, I was excited to see that uh, we were able to get that done and, and get it done so quickly, you know, which is another thing. It's kind of like my wife would probably – Smack me by saying this, but it's almost like you know the expectant uh, father pacing the hallway. You know, and the wife's going to deliver her kids. Like we're going to get, we're going to get a couple new guys. I'm excited. You know, I can't wait to come here. You know, it, but it's good to get that done and over with, and not have that linger on. You know, for that long process. So that was that was exciting for me. The football IQ of these guys seems pretty high too. And I've uh, been around guys that can't unlearn and relearn terminology and coming from one team to another, or, or a new coach comes in and they right. struggle. Right. New scheme and new terminology. These guys are pretty sharp that way, I would imagine. Yeah, very sharp. I mean, especially, I mean, both of them, but I mean, Karras, his dad being a longtime coach, he's been exposed to all that at such an early age. And then uh, it, it's always unique. The more systems you've been in, like they refer to it as being, you know, bilingual, multilingual, and, and speaking different languages. It's like right now they, they speak Italian, we speak French here, however you want to phrase that. We, we both want to order a pepperoni pizza. We we know what it looks like. It's just they call it a little bit different. Right. So it's and then when you really get into some of the nitty gritty of some of the terms, that's really standard across the league, but not every place really defines that term maybe the same as another place. Then you got to dig in on all the adjustments off that term. Does it really mean what you think it is if this shows up? And then you kind of flush that out. So it's. It's uh, it's interesting. I, I kind of enjoy that part of, of of the business or the process when you get new guys, and and you learn a little bit more. Uh, but the, those guys are very bright, and just getting, just talking with them the little bit of time that I've had, you could tell that they they can get into the 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 uh, three hundred and four hundred level depth, if you will, of class on some of those topics. Uh, okay, these guys got a really deep understanding of. Uh, it's always the issues. You know, there, there's no perfect call. There's no perfect scheme. I mean, the defense can always come up with something that's going to make you have an adjustment. And, and the more you know those problems, you know, the better off you can figure out how to solve it. You know, it's like it's, it's a little bit like math. If you, if you know the, the proper formulas to apply to this problem, you can do a lot, and then, especially when they're the ones out there playing. So that's a lot about coaching is being able to have them understand how to apply the correct formula to solve the problem, you know, if that makes any sense. But. Well, Between the Super Bowl and the start of the free agent free agency period, Frank, yeah. did, did Duke and the scouts essentially say to you, "Okay, these guys we kind of like"? Yeah. How will you look at the tape and yeah. you know, give us your thoughts? Yeah, those guys do a great job. I mean, obviously, for all the right reasons, our season was a little longer, and and and, and so we were kind of behind on those other areas, you know, for lack of a better term. But uh, those guys did a great job. Uh, going through that first layer of, of analysis, knowing what we're looking for and saying, hey, these are the guys that you should look at and, and rank and see how, where you come out on these guys. And they kind of tee it up where we're not having to, we're not having to search high and low. They already kind of did, did all the heavy lifting and said, hey, these are the guys that are going to make the first cut. And then so let's go through this list where we're not having to waste our time uh, it's not a waste of time, but just spending too much time that we don't have available to us to uh, to get to a tighter list. They provided that. They did a tremendous job. It really uh, hats off to the ownership, Duke and his team, um, really going through this process like they did and being able to get it done so quickly. And, and in my opinion, of course, I'm biased, but.
to the success of the level that we did it. So, and, and I know they're still going. We're not done on, on, from a global uh, overall team standpoint uh, at all. And that's – so that's, you know, that's pretty cool. It's, it's, it's neat. Uh, it helped me out um, to make myself a bit more efficient and, and uh, be more value-add in the, in the overall process where I fit in the whole deal. Did you feel like because you've been here now a year and obviously you were here um, back in 2018, but the scouting staff and Duke and his staff were able to identify players that fit more of what your style is as opposed to last year when you were just coming in and it was you were reinstalling what you were trying to do, especially in the run game? Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, absolutely. Because the, the familiarity there with that, absolutely. Um, absolutely. So we're not. We're kind of over that initial, okay, tell us, explain to us, you know, show us somehow what exactly that you're looking for, this and that. Say, so, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. What's, what's the biggest challenge? We've got multiple guys coming in that are new that are going to mm-hmm. be playing starting offensive line. Uh, what's the biggest challenge in making sure that you're getting them ready throughout the offseason so they're ready for week one? Uh, the biggest thing is terminology, like I said, is learning the language, especially uh, the veteran guys, like I, like I mentioned before, the analogy that, I stole from another old-time coach, so I don't want to take credit for it, but he, yeah, that was brilliant analysis that it's, or a comparison or, or it, it, saying that, you know, they speak French, you speak Italian, and you, you guys know what you want, how to order pepperoni pizza, just learning each other's language. And then it's, it's really getting up the uh, pace and flushing out that language, making sure it is the same. Like I said, there's so many words in, in football that, teams use that they don't really mean the same they uh, like this five teams might say yeah, that's exactly what, how we say it and mean it and that's how we define it these three other teams over here use the same word and it's very similar but it's got some big uh distinct differences that if this happens that really it's not what it means anymore the adjustments don't come off that way so i mean just to be really generic the word jet protection Okay, when I played in the West Coast system was very early, jet protection was a six-man slide protection. The back had a dual read. You were sliding to either the Will or to the Sam. The back had Mike Sam or Mike Will. That is evolved and it's changed, but it's, but it's changed and evolved differently as different coaches have gone on and, and kind of built and, and, and uh, changed and tweaked their system of protection within that West Coast system and how they want to either either teach and train the quarterback and how does the back fit into it and and how you pick up and handle certain pressures. And now it's morphed into – it's not really a slide protection. It's got a little sort protection to it, which is really comes from more uh, of a digit family system of offense. So it's kind of it's – it's morphed and evolved into so many different things where – where I, when I was in Houston coaching, now not playing, it's, it was modified a little bit, how we handled four a week and where the back fits in to uh, when I got to Dallas, we used jet very little, but then it was still not quite the same as it was in Houston, but we more similar to as a player, but we re-ID things and the back would scan across differently. And then to now, it's, it's an entire blend of all of the above, which is pretty cool and unique. If you think about it, but so it's it's evolved. It's just like technology evolves football and schematics. Um, as the defense gets more exotic, the offense uh, gets more exotic. You're just constantly adjusting to to the adjustment to the adjustment, and it's how you teach. And like I was telling these guys today, as we kind of just talking about some initial terminology that maybe they've heard that familiar over the course of their careers is that a protection line one always starts with the quarterback. How do you want to teach and train your quarterback? I don't care what you choose to do, what scheme you do. It all starts with him. Do you want to have him be a, a big side adjust guy? Do you want to have your hots built in? Do you want him to do more of that? Do you want to do less of that? I mean, it just, it's all about – it all starts with him. He got the ball in his hand. So it all, it all stems from that. So it's – I guess you can say I'm kind of geeking out a little bit or nerding out on O-line play and football stuff, but that's, that's kind of cool. It's unique. It's interesting to me on that kind of stuff. I don't know if I answered uh, your question. No, first, first off, I, I feel like it must be said, that might be one of the most detailed answers to a question I've ever gotten. Uh, so thank you for that. That was actually incredibly insightful. And, and I guess that goes back to kind of the, to 
carry on your last train of thought there. Yeah. Does it go back to how good your quarterback is? And basically, you need to have a quarterback who can. Who oh, can absolutely. Think to make sure that you can maximize what you want to do. For Absolutely. I've been I've been fortunate enough as a player and a, and a coach to be exposed to all of these variety of protection nuances and schemes, and they're not all the same, uh, and they are not made for all quarterbacks. So, not every quarterback can handle that. Good, bad, or indifferent. I mean, that's just who they are, and they've got whatever their skill set is to get in the league. And, and then we're very fortunate that we've got a quarterback that can handle all of it. And which is really fun to be a part of. And uh, so it's cool. But, uh, but definitely it's just like everything, you got to do what your players can do best. I mean, they're, they, that's your job as a coach. And, and, then, uh, and when you have a guy who can do a lot more, then, then you can do a lot more. It's not about what the coaches can dream up and draw and, and go on the chalkboard. It's about what the Johnnies and Joes can execute and perform. I know. Along those lines, how much has it gotten harder to keep things simple as everything else gets more exotic? As a, as a teacher, as a line right, coach, that those guys is the art of coaching, right there. <laughs> has that gotten harder now in today's game, though? Is yeah, it, it's yeah. gotten it's gotten. I don't know if harder is the right word. It, it's just maybe gotten different. It's harder is a relative term. It was hard back in 1950, right when the things were getting you know evolving and changing, just like it is now. I mean. Players are a lot bigger, stronger, faster. Is it harder? It's all relative, you know. Um, but that's like the art of coaching. That's your that's your job. That's why I was saying I'd love to pick Karis's brain about Skarnecchia because you I can get something new on how he may, maybe phrase something, how he viewed this that he would teach it this way because he thought, oh, okay, I love stuff like that. So it's like uh, Coach McNally is is. Uh, a great mentor of mine, and I still talk with him all the time. And that's why I love having him still. He watches practice, and and he'll throw things at me because he's constantly making me think along those lines. It's fantastic. So it's you know um, you got it's you got to always be thinking in those terms, in my opinion. You know you have to. I think uh, go ahead, I think Kappa was the first free agent announced on Monday. Between age, skill level, fit, everything else, was he kind of the, the number one target for the Bengals? Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to get in here and, and say who was number one and who was eighth on the list. I mean, you really are just kind of like these. You just – because of the cap and then you got I – mean, we're just one of 32 teams, right? So some of their teams they were on are trying to get them to stay amongst all these other teams are trying to get them. So it's like you got to go in – it's this block. It was, these are the guys we, we got to go after. This is like the upper tier. You know, this is the next tier. I mean, I, I've even read articles that you guys view it the same way. It's just like the top, top tier of this first wave, the second wave of free agency. I've heard that phrase before. But he's, both those guys were, were clearly up there for us to go after right away. And, you know, you don't want to be – you don't want to be left without anything, right? I mean, we knew we needed to do something, so – those definitely both those guys were high on that on that upper quadrant. You've got, tier, a, you you've got a right guard, you've got a center. Yeah. What happens at left guard? Do you uh, uh, do you put Jackson over there to see if he can do it? Or what? What? Uh, how, how do you envision that playing out? Well, the good news is I got some time before our first game, and uh, so that's. We'll, we'll, I think there's still a lot of things in motion. Um, so it's kind of hard to say this is how it's going to go. It's another thing you got to be, you got to be flexible. But Jackson's definitely a guy competing for that spot. There's no question about it. Yeah. I mean that's why he was brought here. Uh, his learning curve and growth that he showed last year definitely puts him in a position to be a guy that's going to be competing for it. Do you think he's more natural on the left side? Do you think he's more natural on the left side? I think he's more natural because he played his college career on the left side, but he was getting more comfortable as the season went on, being on the right as well. Along those same so. lines, uh, are you hopeful about maybe adding more guys to the competition? And not necessarily a guard, just in general. Yeah, you always want to add more guys to the competition. I mean, the, the more the more the merrier, and, and competition brings out the best of everybody. I want guys fighting, scratching, and clawing to, to have a mindset of to, to making the active roster and then, and then starting. You can, you know, compete. Anyone who's, who's 
you know, comes into the building thinking they've made it and arrived and I'm good, that's never a good thing in this profession. Even, even the, the I've been able to coach some good ones and they always kind of had that mindset, you know. You, you've got to get to a point where it's, it's got to be uh, internal competition where I, I'm, I gotta, I'm driving myself to, I can't, you know, get a step behind. And um, to me, that's the secret to guys having success and playing at a high level in this league. So that's, competition's a great thing. And the more, the better. Have you got a sense that Jackson knows this is an important offseason for him? Have they talked about Oh, absolutely. That? Absolutely. There's no question about that. He's, I know he's he's doing some things from a training. I'm not, I don't want to get too far in, in, the, in I don't, his personal stuff. That's he can tell you about all what he's doing. But I know he's invested in himself on his approach to this off season. And I, and I was I was proud of him, some of the choices he's making to better himself as a professional uh, in that in that area. So that's how, good. How far into the tape did you? I just watched this last year, you know, was I like to watch the more recent stuff. I mean, I, I went back a couple years with uh, Karras because his center play. I wanted to watch the stuff when he, last time he played center when he was in Miami. It was the most recent stuff. And then, uh, but for Kappa, just watching games from this year. That's all I need to see. How much easier do these guys make your job? Shoot, good players always make your job easier, you know. Um, at the end of the day, it's always about the players. It's always about the Johnnies and Joes. You know, I the analogy I like to use in my room is I'm just the bus driver. I'm driving the bus. I got a map. I'm making sure we're going in the right direction, but the bus does not move one inch if we don't have a quality engine and four sets of wheels. And the players are the engine and the wheels, and they make it all go. And and that's that's just my view on the old line, and, and really that's – how I believe the whole football team's that way, and and you know it's it's all about the players. It's my job is, is to remove all the barriers for them to do their job, make them play free and fast and physical, and then uh, and let them go and make sure we're going in the right direction. Coach, we have a challenge to make a proficient pass protector a better run blocker, or make a better a proficient run blocker a better pass protector. Which which is which is more of a challenge? I, I think the run blocker into a more proficient pass blocker is the bigger challenge. Uh, it requires maybe a little bit more uh, innate skills that mom and dad gave them, per se, and then you can fine tune some things. Uh, I think run blocking, you, you, can, you can do a lot with a group if they work together and they understand the adjustments and nuances. Uh, from a pressure standpoint that teams throw at you to stop the run. And if you can handle those movements and those pressures, you can you can grind out a run game. Uh, and there's other factors involved with the back and and then and uh, and you're kind of attacking the defense per se with with the blocking surface on what kind of runs you're doing, knowing their fronts and coverages that go tied to that. Maybe protection you're a little bit more reactionary because now they if they know you're throwing so they're attacking you with their exotic fronts and pressures as opposed to the other way around so that might make it a little bit more difficult that way I mean I, everything we do is hard so it's one of those just get over that and then just grind and keep going forward it's no secret that Collins is visiting or has visited what was your relationship like with him in Dallas and what do you think of him yeah I, I, I had a great relationship with uh, LC Love him to death. He's he definitely fits the mold of a glass eater. Just watch his tape. That's clearly evident. He is nasty, and uh, he was a lot of fun to coach. And then uh, so we'll 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 see where all that stuff comes up. Uh, it's obviously a business, and Trey is let go. What do you lose when you, when you when you lose a guy like Trey? Where he brought you last year? Yeah, you lose a pro's pro. I, I love Trey Hopkins. He was the ultimate pro. He got guys on the same page, did a great job communicating. Um, my first go around here, moving him from guard to center and then helping him develop and learn that position. Uh, it was a lot of fun. He was very coachable. He was a guy that always would listen and then try to apply everything that you were, you were teaching and training with him on the practice field. And you could see him trying to apply things 
uh, on game day, but uh, just loved the way he handled his business, went about himself. Uh, he was a grinder, a worker, and, and a true pro. You guys good? Great. Great. Thanks, Thank you. All right, guys. Thanks Thank you. Time. You bet. Thanks, it. guys. Thanks, Frank. Thank you. Uh, we're going to shut it down for now.